This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abedur Planner, Mr. Green, Camp Power, and Marcus Biel. What's up? We are now sitting in the Kia Niro EV. Some say it's a 2023 model. <laughs> yeah, from the future. Wait, let me see. Uh, yeah, here we go. Well, you know what? In general, I complain about uh, inter interior light being too white. Like, looks like uh, in a hospital. I prefer the the more yellowish uh, 4. Uh, 4200 Kelvin rather than 6000 Kelvin. But here, I think I think actually they put on good old uh, halogen lights. Yeah, they they feel hot already now after being on for a couple of minutes. So you get the feeling that we are driving an old uh, old car, old Kia. <laughs> But okay, so um, let, me see, let me see. Let me show you guys the auto steer. If I do this, zoop, zoop, and then look, ma, no hands. It can even do the mergers without going freaking crazy. I think it was all yeah I tried recently. Every merger was like, ah, you know. But here, no problemo. And actually, the auto steer here, the LK, LK, no, wait, wait, was it LFA? I don't remember. Lane following assist or LKA, lane keeping assist. Like you guys see, it's actually doing a very good job. Let me go a little bit faster here. There, okay. So um, I like it, but you know, yeah, with the old Nero, you also had this auto stay, right? But in the new one here is more like uh, uh, what you find in EV6 and Ionic 5, which is that you can actually disable cruise control like now but we still have auto steer active well i can't demonstrate but you know you can see that we, we are not on cruise control but the auto steer is active 
So that's a little bit uh, unique because uh, most cars I try, Tesla or Audi or uh, Volvo or something, uh, in, order, in order to enable auto steer, you have to have adaptive cruise control active also. But here, no problem. Wait, what happens if I don't hold the steering wheel? Will the car slow down? I mean, I'm the one throttling right now. Let's see what happens. Do we see that whoop, 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 whoop? Hmm. Okay. It's still steering. Is he gonna steer here? Ah! Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> LFA uh, as is the council. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, can I use it again? Let's see. Um, yeah, I, I can use uh, auto steer again. You see, it, it's not like Tesla or what was it again? It was Tesla and um, yeah, X Bang. Yeah, no, Xiaopang, Xiaopang, yeah, Xiaopang. They, they, if you don't hold the steering wheel, they punish you, and then you cannot use auto steer for the rest of the drive. You have to park and then start again before you can use auto steer. <laughs> but here it's like, okay, you get instant redemption and you can start using it again, yes. So, but um, yeah, what do I think about this e Nero? You know, I had to look in my uh, videos, the old videos, to find out when the e Nero came out or the Nero EV. Uh, I was in Korea and I was able to test uh, the Nero EV over there in 2018. That's actually four years ago. So you see, the Nero came out four years ago, and now they have a refresh Nero. And how much better is a new Nero? Should you buy it? Should you not buy it? Well, if you watch this video, you will find out whether you should buy it or not. But um, um, yeah, so four years has passed. Uh, what did they do to improve the Nero? Well, first of all, uh, I think that came in 2020, I think. They got a bigger screen and also app support. Wait, didn't they have it before? I don't remember. I wonder maybe the, er the earliest Nero didn't have app support. Correct me if I'm wrong. But with the new screen, you know, the one you can have this swipe here, the wider screen, uh, that came in 2020. I think also back then uh, with that one, uh, app support came, if I remember correctly. But that was like the just internal update. They haven't updated their looks or anything until now, right? So you would expect that uh, now that we finally have, well, you know what, I, I changed my mind, I'm gonna go this way. Now that we finally have a new Nero, it should be a lot better than the old one, right? Actually not. So um, I measured 80, no, I measured 64.3 kilowatt hour net capacity on this battery. The old one, how much was it? About the same, also around 64 kilowatt hour. Um, when it comes to charging speed, before it used to charge a peak at 75 kilowatt roughly you go from 72 to 75 kilowatt now it peaks at 82 no wait 84 kilowatt and you can get 80 kilowatt for a little bit right but then it starts throttling but then it throttles earlier than before so which means that if you charge let's say 60 percent then it's more or less the same as before what about soundproofing well i haven't been able to test it by the way uh, i was no, wait, no, 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 I tested it. Well, I tested it. I tested the sound and it is more or less the same as before. And you can kind of hear it that it's not that quiet, really. I recently tried Aria, which I guess is a direct competitor price wise, size wise, Aria is actually bigger. Uh, I tested recently uh, uh, MG Marvel. And Marvel and Aria, they are way quieter than uh, Nero. So, um, I, you know, yeah, I even have a, a Kia Bjorn t-shirt that Kia gave me because back then, four years ago, e Nero was quite kick-ass because there weren't that many other competitors out there. Uh, you had Kona that came out and then, okay, Kona came out in, uh, was it 2017 or late 20? Yeah, I don't remember. But back then, we didn't have the MAB cars, uh, like uh, ID4, Skoda Enyaq, or ID3, 
uh, we didn't have uh, even Model 3, Model Y was not out yet. Uh, what else? Yeah, like Aria wasn't out, MG Marvel wasn't out, even the MG ZS EV was not out, right? But today, there are so many other options out there. So suddenly, the e Nero needs to compete with other cars that are better technically. And for example, MG ZS EV, when it came out, it had uh, roughly 44 kilowatt hour battery. And now they came out with a 70 kilowatt hour battery. For example, Leaf, first it started with 24 kilowatt hour, and then 30, and then 40, and then 62 kilowatt hour, and then, okay, Aria, but yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is that after some years, most cars, models, they get a big battery with faster charging or something significant. But then this Nero, after four years, it still has the same battery and charges more or less the same and it has the same sound levels right uh, so what did they change again yeah, they have now you have a vehicle to load so you, have, you have a shuko outlet here you can pull 16 amp i guess you can bring a microwave oven but and okay and the, the auto steer seems to actually work better than before the whole lfa thing here uh, the screen looks nicer um, i wonder if maybe they increase the, the size on the screen and then interior also, they change, change a little bit, uh, fairly nice and open, all that. But uh, I still feel like, uh, okay, there's some soft stuff here, but some, some plastic here and there, some hard plastic. And when I've been sitting in other cars like Aria, it, it, it's way nicer. And Aria is also better equipped, but Aria, I guess it's a small battery Aria, um, has shorter range, but it charges faster. And it costs also roughly the same, and, uh, but you, you can't just look at the starting price because all your starting price uh, might be slightly higher, but you get so much stuff, good goodies included. Whereas here, if you start with the bare bone here, then you get almost nothing. You have to go for some of the higher trims. So by the way, what was the trim on this one again? Let me just check, let me, let me do, do a flip mode here. Um, let me check something. This one is called, uh, Active Plus, yeah, Active Plus trim. It's one of the middle trims. I think you have the bottom trim and then one up and then second up. And this is the Active Plus. So you have some equipment, but you don't have head-up display, unlike Aria. Um, and what else is it? Uh, yeah, space-wise, uh, this one I measure it to be more or less the same as the, the old Nero. Uh, somehow I managed to squeeze in one extra banana box here that I couldn't oh, oh, couldn't fit in here. Yeah, by the way, over the speed bumps, it just feels a bit uncomfortable. The whole ride is... Uh, um, okay, it, it's it's not that, that comfy, it's not that bold. It, okay, it's semi-firm, but um, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I feel like the ride uh, doesn't feel and sound as premium as some of the other competitors nowadays. So, um, yeah, you know, I used to call myself Kia Bjorn. Yeah, here, here's the speed bump. I mean, it's not the worst, okay? I mean, it's not, uh, it's not as harsh as uh, Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, just to put it in perspective. But for example, I remember Aria, I feel like Aria was way more comfier, but especially the, especially the 63 kilowatt hour, the 87 kilowatt hour Aria, I believe has hard, hard firmer suspension because it, it needs to accommodate for the, the heavier battery. But um, so, um, I mean, there must be something good with this uh, Nero, right? Well, I mean, the car is good, don't get me wrong, because it was already, I mean, it was very good back in 2018 because there weren't that many options out there. But then they haven't improved much for four years. But I feel like cars coming out today, or came out, like, the, like I mentioned the MEB cars and the, and the other cars, they are just better in many ways. And for example, Nissan, you know, Nissan, when they came out with a Leaf back then, the, the, the 24, 30 Leaf, it wasn't that quiet. But then with the 40 kilowatt hour leaf, the one that started replicating a lot, 
Then they improved the soundproofing and it became better. They even talked about it. They put some soundproofing in the wheel arches and, and, and the pillars and stuff. And then when they came up with Aria, they made it even more quiet. So actually Aria is actually as quiet as BMW and Mercedes, right? It's crazy, right? A Japanese medium priced car. But with the Nero, no difference. Same as before. So, I mean, does it make the car worse? I mean, the car has not been downgraded since before, but it has not been upgraded. <laughs> so, so actually, you guys see how where this is going. What, what, what the heck? There's a mother trucker's park here. Wait, what? Okay, Achtung, Achtung. Oh, I think he has a flat tire. Uh, and it's still front wheel drive, by the way. So, and also the power is the same. Uh, 150 kilowatt, uh, 204 horsepower in the, in the front wheel. So, um, yeah. I'm not sure what else I should say. Uh, the car, okay, it's easy to drive. Uh, the infotainment is uh, relatively easy to understand. Uh, I've gotten used to it now. So you have the map here, you can slide here and stuff. You know, one thing I don't like is that to see charging stations, you have to zoom in so damn far. Like, like, wait, I can't even see it. It's supposed to be here. Now I see the charging stations, like this one. So, okay, wait, wait, wait I have to, it's not, that not like wait can I yeah so I feel like um, okay I mean it works but I feel like the infotainment also is a bit uh, outdated compared to some of the competitors and also I, I don't know if this is just uh, me like a placebo effect but when I I find myself when I when I do something like press the menu button here or go home or something or, or click on some of the EV I don't know if you saw that click here okay energy information I have to I have to swipe this one no I have to take this one away and then click on energy consumption um, I feel like it's a bit laggy like it takes sometimes almost half a second before I press something. Wait, I didn't press it properly. But from I press something until it appears. Uh, do you guys see that? But it wasn't like this before because I remember the Korean cars, Nero, Kona, Seoul. When you press something, it was just super snappy. It would come instantly. But somehow, maybe they just bloated the uh, software I don't know what they did really when they upgrade uh, it's like when you upgrade Windows 95 right it becomes sluggier and sluggier and I feel like that's the same here uh, but it's not only here um, can't demonstrate right now but um, when I exit the car and you know that that button to lock the car when I press it it actually takes almost a second before the car locks I was about to double click on it, right? Or I wasn't sure whether I locked the car. So that's that's weird. That's actually worse than before then. <laughs> so yes, I used to praise the Nero for being an awesome car, but unfortunately I cannot praise it anymore because, because it hasn't improved. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see. Wait, wait, wait. I want to have that side you you know you do it like this yeah so then we see the charger and also by the way I, I don't know what's up with this because um, in EV6 and Ionic 5 the in the instrument cluster you can see percentage wait could you yeah I'm pretty sure you can see battery percentage in the instrument cluster here you just have this arc this 45 degrees arc where you have zero and one and you see the battery uh, percent you see the battery state roughly uh, but most people want to see percent <laughs> uh, but you have you have it here 
but that's kind of clumsy because I always have to have it up up here uh, unless you want to have something else here you know like media or something but then you don't see the batteries present so they should put it here because they're trying to why am I saying this because they are at least trying to make this new look here the the, the software and look and feel and the features like the auto steer that works without uh, a battery cruise control one that that works just like the ev6 and ionic 5 and i feel like oh yeah this one also here you know now we have the hvac settings and you press this button and you alternate between uh hvac and now we have the map and knob and all the other buttons right so the whole the same interface here they took it or the same interface here is also in ionic 5 and ev6 so they tried to make it similar, which is good, you know, improvement, but why didn't they put battery percentage in the instrument cluster? <laughs> I'm just nitpicking now. So I'm really trying to find reasons for buying this car in 2022 and it's actually getting kind of hard for me to find good reasons because there are so many other better options out there. Uh, I personally, if I had around 400, 450K Nook, to burn on something like this, right? Some kind of crossover SUV. I would take Aria in a heartbeat, really. Aria is a really impressive car. Uh, it uh, It's quiet. It's actually more spacious than this one. It charges faster. It, um, it has, it's, it's packed with features. Uh, what else? Also relatively short wait time for Aria. Some of the other cars can take forever before you can get them. Wait, let me see what happens if I don't... Uh, the auto stair is still active. There. Okay, and then suddenly auto stair stops working. That is bad, man. That is really bad. You should not disengage auto stair like that. <laughs> um, well, okay, let me try something else then. What if I um, do a flip mode here? So, no, okay, no, let's, let's keep going. Let's go. I'm gonna try and drive the other direction because normally when I do the, the auto stair test thing, I'm on the motorway uh, doing the uh, range test, right? But what if we just do a flip mode here? I wanna test again, what happens if you do this uh, with uh, adaptive cruise control active also? This is Rema Brin, this is uh, my uh, local uh, shack. I buy most of my stuff here, diapers, food, you know, fruits and uh, drinks and everything, bread, yeah. Okay, anyway, okay, now I'm gonna use adaptive cruise control and auto steer. So now we're just cruising at 40 kilometers per hour on the speed though. So now let's see what happens if it don't touch the thing really. Will it just disengage the, will, will it bring the car to a complete stop and all that? Uh, why, why, oh. That's a Zoe without uh, rear ta uh, rare taillights. By the way, I don't know what's up with those guys. Um, actually, that one I can understand because the Zoe's or many EVs, uh, when you when you uh, <laughs> when you park and when you charge, just like this one actually, this, this one also, and when you charge, you don't have heater active, you don't have the screen active. You have to power up the car, but then the lights are on. But then you switch off the light to park light and then you forget about it when once you start driving but tesla people they don't they, they don't do that because when you enter tesla the heater comes on and the screen comes on so you don't have to dick around with the lights on and off but what i don't understand is many fossil cars also drive around with park lights and no tail lights at night what it just disengaged oh, this is bad man it disengaged auto steer but it did not slow down even Aria did it correctly. Aria slowed down. Aria did this uh, hard braking, you know, and slowed down. Very important. This one didn't do it. So, you see, I, I keep finding things about this. Actually, this could have been this case also back then when I tried uh, Nero, by the way. Yeah, but maybe back then I was no, so, not so strict about all the tests. Uh, maybe I've, begun, I, I've gotten grumpier over the years. Yeah. Just like, uh, no, okay, I'm not gonna mention any other name, but yeah, so, so, really, uh, as always, I have to be honest with my tests, and, okay, okay, by the way, yeah, I have to be honest with my tests, yes, one thing, though, I can tell you guys is that this car is really efficient, so, uh, like now we've been driving around okay mostly on the smaller uh, 
uh, roads and all that. But the consumption is 157 watt hour per kilometer. But when I did the uh, range test and also 1,000 kilometer challenge, it turns out that yes, uh, at least Eniro is um, is more efficient than Aria. So even though it charges slower than Aria. Uh, it, it's actually more or less on par with Aria on 1000 kilometer challenge. So you can say that, yeah, so even though this car charges kind of slow for 2022 standard, you know, all peaks at roughly 80 kilowatt and then keeps it not for too long. But because it is so efficient, then that saves the car, kind of, because it's efficient at low speed, but it has a, a drag or coefficient of 0.29, which is kind of high. So when you hammer it on the motorway, it becomes a little bit thirsty. But because it has like this low base consumption, I don't know, uh, I, I, this is, I, I invented that bird, but the base consumption would be something like the, cons the lowest consumption you would possibly have when you are just uh, hyper mining, for example, right? Or at 90 kilometers per hour, you have whatever consumption you have there. And then when you go faster than, uh, since the base consumption is already kind of low uh, because of good deficiency in drivetrain and motors and whatever, uh, then, uh, how do I put this? Then it doesn't become that thirsty, right? Okay, let me put a, give you an example here. Uh, this car, I don't remember how it was, but I think it averaged around 150 watt hour per kilometer, which is pretty good for some semi-boxy car. And then in comparison, the X-Bank P7, which is uh, like a sleek sedan, has way lower drag coefficient. But because the P7 was already quite thirsty in the 90 test, I think it was around 200 watt hour per kilometer. Then in the high speed test, the P7, despite having lower drag coefficient, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the P7 was thirstier than E Nero at 120 kilometers per hour because of the base consumption was higher, you know? So, yes, in that regard, you can say that, yeah, um, this one still, can, I mean, it can, I guess it can still sell in 2022. People will buy the car and they will be super happy with it. Um, simply because it was already very good when it came out in 2018 but uh, to be 100 percent honest there are in my opinion other better cars out there on the market yeah i mean um but i can i can also tell you that there are other cars out there that are worse than uh e Nero. For example, um, Lexus UX 300e, Mac, uh, what is it, Mazda MX-30, but that's cheaper. Uh, but there, there are other cars that are worse than this one at least, right? So, um, <laughs> I don't know if this makes any sense, man. I'm just babbling around while I'm driving now. It's 3.30 at night. I should be home uh, taking care of uh, uh, wifey and uh, Isabel. So, um, yeah, let me do a little flip mode here. I think I'll just go home now. So, um, what else should I say about the test? Oh, wow, that's an okay turning circle, that's good. And it's fairly, it's fairly snappy. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing about this car is that it still weighs around 1,800 no, 1, and something, I don't remember. Roughly 1,800 kilograms with driver, right? So, it's still, a relatively light car and despite having only 200 horsepower it's still a snappy car to drive around the city and all that uh, easy to maneuver it's not too long uh, and as for space by the way I tried it uh, the baby stroller test uh, unfortunately I had this car for a limited time and I had to prioritize all the other tests so I was not able to do the baby stroller test uh, and all, so on but um, in order to hook, all, I mean, in order to mount the Isofix, there are some. Uh, how is this again? Yeah, um, there there is no opening for the Isofix like that. Some many cars, you know, they have like a lid or something. Here, there's no lid, but there is just some Isofix uh, symbols. And then, if you finger into the hole, you will feel the the Isofix hooks. So, doing this uh, with dim lights at in the evening or night or something, I was like. I was just, you just have to feel it with the fingers, find the hooks, and then, you, yeah, you, but it's a little bit clumsy to uh, mount in the Isofix base in here. 
Uh, Space-wise, though, it's okay. You can push the seat forward when you have the baby seat there. Uh, when it comes to the trunk, the trunk is not very uh, like long or deep because uh, this car is kind of short, but at least it's tall. Uh, so when I carried the the child, uh, the, sorry, the baby stroller with me, uh, Cybex e -Priam, I had to put the Eprium uh, base on the bottom, and then I have to put the carry cot on top. Normally, I don't do that in other cars because normally I will be, I will be able to put those two elements side by side. But here, because the trunk is kind of short, then that's the only way to do it. But at least it worked, and I didn't have to take off the wheels. So yes, despite being a somewhat compact car, then you can actually fit uh, family equipment in here. And also now, yeah, with a new one, by the way, they they have a frunk, a small frunk. I don't think in the old Nero had the frunk, but at least this one has it. So yeah, you see now we park here for the trip. It's only 23 kilometer trip, but uh, the consumption was 155 watt hour per kilometer, even on wet roads. So you see, if you're only using this around town and you, if you don't care too much about 1000 kilometer challenge, right, or, or something like that, and if you don't have a too big family, then the Nero will work just great for you. But um, I still personally would go for Aria. I keep mentioning Aria because I actually, I was super impressed of Aria. <laughs> so yeah, so I would say, okay, because I want you to be as happy as possible with your choice once you buy a car. Um, but seriously, before you, before you buy, Nero, you should try Aria. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only car you should try because yeah, I can say that. Uh, yeah, maybe you can. You should also consider uh, MG Marvel R, but that's a Chinese car and there's Chinese software and the, the, the behavior of, of those Chinese cars is something you not, might not want. But at least I would say that Nissan and uh, the Korean cars they are very similar in some ways you know and they they have more like the typical behavior on things uh here right uh, that uh, you would expect or you do you, it doesn't annoy you too much but the, the chinese software and the chinese cars they have some some features and things and dongs and whatever that, uh, that you would annoy the heck out of me but the one thing i didn't demonstrate but i can tell you guys is that one minus with audio is that it tends to slow down like a toyota driver okay maybe not that bad but it's when you're driving on motorways and you use cruise control and you drive uh, at speed limit plus vat um, uh, the, the audio tends to slow down a little bit, but this car here, when I hammered it on 1000 km challenge going a little bit over speed limits, it did not slow down in those curves. So that was good. So that's, you know, good shit. But um, yeah, other than that though, I think I just have to end it here. So um, yeah, did I forget anything? No, I don't think so. That's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.